So in today's video, I'm going to be making a spec animation for the 100. It's a cricket tournament where there's only 100 balls, and it's franchise cricket. So the, I'm going to be making it for a specific team, which is the London Spirit. This will be for wickets, for example. So it'll be a small sort of social media um, post that they can put up when there's a wicket uh, that's been taken. So to start off with, I'm going to make my composition up as 1080p but I'm going to make it as a 1080 one by one square so that it can be used for Instagram or it can be used for Twitter and doesn't take up too much space. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's 30 FPS as well and then it's for stories etc as um, store Instagram stories are at 30 FPS. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a fusion composition so I'll go in there into our timeline, new fusion composition. I'm going to make this 10 seconds. And then we can drag that into our timeline and go into fusion. So to start off with, I took our, the London Spirit logo and I tracked it out in Affinity Designer so that, that we have a vector file to work with which will allow me to change the individual colours and letterings of the logo and will allow me to do stretches and things like that. So I will start off by putting in our background, um, which is not that one, I'll put our background in and a merge node so that we've got something to work from and to get our colours for our background, we can use a. In fact, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with black as the background color um, to start off with. So I'm going to go into Fusion, Fusion tab up here, import SVG, and import the vector file that I made earlier, which is here. And then I will get a transform node and just scale it down a bit. So it is going to go into the top right hand corner of our composition. Like so. Which brings the size up to 0.25 maybe. I think that might be, yeah, slightly better. So the next thing I want to do is using the branding that they have on for the London Spirit, they have basically a half and half blue and black for their logos and a lot of their graphics. So I'm going to get a shape render. So I'll merge here and add a shape render. Shape. So grab a shape render and then connect up a shape rectangle there. And then I'm just going to position this to the full height of the screen and move it over as well. So it takes up only half the screen. About 0.25 should do it. So we've got 50 50 here. I'm going to make this part. Um, the same color blue that they use for the team colors. So I'll find the logo, which is here. And just drag and drop it in. And I have two windows, drag this here. And then I'll change the color using the eyedropper to the background color there. So we can get rid of that. So now we've got our 50-50 split window and a London Spirit in the corner. And this will be our, our background that we're going to be working with. So next I want to do is I want to add in some text. So I'm going to add in the number for the wicket that has been taken. So we'll just start off with one. So we'll start off by adding a merge node in and then a text plus. And this is just going to be number one. I'm going to change it to a, a sans font and make it large. 
so we'll make it sort of this sort of size, maybe a bit larger than that. I think we can go possibly two. That's too big. Just one. Maybe one will be all right. Yeah, that'll be okay. And then I'm going to change the shading so that it's just an outline, and it's not a very thick outline. It just needs to be um, something like that. Something where it's clear, but it's a one. But it's not too big. But this is because I want to have text that goes over the top of this. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is have another merge. And again, we'll add another text. And this one's going to say wicket. And again, we'll just go with the same font we had before. And have it in as fit, any thick writing. We'll just increase the size. So it's overlapping slightly, but not too much. So this is something like 1.85, 1.8. And then to do our animation, we are going to, I think we're going to start off by do, animating this top text up here. So to do that, I'm going to go into our group. Let's just move this group up out of the way of everything else. Now I think to check with when you're importing SVG files is are all letters aligned um, so just to check that I'm going to go through and make sure they're all aligned as a logo which they are and then to make sure that the um, there's no letters that are dupl on duplicate backgrounds so when you import an SVG it works in backgrounds and to change that you just need to go for each path and just make sure that they're all um, the right path for each letter and there's not two two letters on the same one so for this with one for example I have two letters on here that are exactly the same uh, on the same background so if I was to change the, the uh, background color it would affect both letters and I don't want it to do that to start off with so I'm going to change these so that they can be individual letters. So I'm just gonna expand our box. There we go. Okay, so now we have an individual letter for each um, background, which means that we can now animate that background to make it look more interesting. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the first letter, which is the L here, and then for frame 10, in fact, I'm going to start from frame 5. We're going to make it the same color as the blue um, in the background. So we'll go blue here and we'll keyframe the color. In fact, we'll start off with white. We'll start off with white. And so it, when it comes back around again, it will look, it will look like it will flow. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, and then we'll go to the blue. Then we'll go 1, 2, 3. And we go to light blue. And then we've one, two, three, back to white. So how's that look for that letter? Mm, don't like that so much. Okay, so we'll get rid of the keyframe here. We'll keep this as blue. So then we'll go one frame forward and then we'll go to the le next letter in the sequence. Now just to make sure the letters in a different place, so we can go to here, go keyframe one, one, two, three, then light blue, one, two, three, back to white, and we'll go back two frames, then we go on to the next letter, which is the letter N. So we will keyframe here, one, two, three, light blue, one, two, three. Uh, white. My mistake. It should be 
blue to start off with. Same for this one. Starting off at blue. And going to light blue and then back to white. And then we can go to the next one. So now we've got an animation. So it starts off at a dark blue, then changes to, to white in a sort of smooth fashion. So now I want to do the same thing for the spirit underneath, because it's going to be animating and looping at the end, I'll have it go back to dark blue so that it will be a continuous animation and it will look good. So I'll do that now for the spirit logo. Okay, so now I've animated the Fun and Spirit logo in the top hand corner. I'm going to make a animation for the wicket. So we will go to our wicket text. So we'll just close down the group so it keeps it nice and neat. We'll go to our wicket text over here. So now we know roughly the timing of where that Spirit logo ends up finishing at. It's around 60 frames. We're going to go to just before that and that's where we're going to begin our animation for the wicket so we will go to our size and just keyframe the size 10 frames later 64 keyframe it again and then we'll go back to the first frame and set it to zero and then we we'll go one frame before and change the tracking of the text to 0.6 and then one frame before that finishes and we'll put this to I think 1.1, just make it a little bit larger. Maybe so that the C isn't completely covering the letter or uh, we'll go we'll go there. 1.1, 1.2, So next what we'll do is We will watch this animation back and see what this looks like. Okay, it looks quite rubbish. So to change that, we are going to close down our keyframes and then open up the keyframes for the size. Uh, we've not changed the tracking. We've not done the keyframes for the tracking. That's fine, we'll just do that now. So like this 0.6. So now animation looks like that. So you can see the text is coming out as well. Uh, to do our graph, I'm going to highlight just one of them. I'm going to drag the uh, handlebar over to the left and then drag this one up like that. So we can watch that back. You can see the instant impact that makes on the size. Maybe a little bit too much over this way. And again, we'll do the same for the character spacing drag this over, drag this one up. Okay, that looks better. So next I want to do the same sort of animation I've just done in the top right hand corner with the London Spirit logo, but with our wicket. So I'm gonna to go to 70 frames and we're gonna to go to character level styling. This will allow us to highlight each individual letter and do the same thing we've done before. So to start off with, we will keyframe our animation. We'll go to highlight the W. Make sure that that's uh, been keyframed. We will go three frames forward, two, three. And we'll just go to the light blue. And in fact, we'll go to the dark blue. And then we'll go to light blue three frames later. And then again, three frames later, not two, three. And then we'll go back to white. So it should look something like this. 
doesn't work with the dark blue because it's, it's setting into the background. So let's get rid of those. Let's go back and delete these. And go back to just our dark blue. And we will change it back to light blue. Now, one, two, three, back to white. And then we'll highlight the next letter. And we'll go back two frames. Highlight the next letter. And then we'll change this, which we'll OK. One, two, three. Select light blue. One, two, three. So it's going to come in like so, do a little pulse of color. So we can do the same thing again backwards. We'll just go back to our tools. We will hit the size, go 10 frames forward, go back to zero, and then tracking as well. In fact, we'll do that a frame before, tracking there, tracking there, and then we'll change the first keyframe back to 0.6 and then go back to our size and character level styling highlight these and drag it up and again drag it up and slightly get long like so so it neatly pulls away so it's going to come in do a colour pulse and then go away so next, what I want to do is do the same thing, just for the little cup of pulse, behind the one. But this time I'm going to make it so that it goes whilst we've got the wicket open. So we'll do this here. And I will change the colour. It's nice and easy, just one, two, three, light blue, one, two, three, white. And then we can do it again, one, two, three, light blue, one, two, three, white. So I can see what that looks like. I don't like one more. I think we need to add an extra gap in there just to make it a little bit longer. One, two, three, there we'll keyframe it. One, two, three, light blue, one, two, three, white. So in between the gaps, we got one, two, three, yeah. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then white. So let's give this a save. So we've got our color pulse behind the wicket. Now what I want to do is make a piece that's going to be across the whole thing to add this a bit more a bit more life to this um, background and a bit more texture so what we're going to do is add another merge in fact we'll go back to our s rectangle and we're going to add a s merge into our layers in fact let's move these up a bit and add a couple then we are going to add a rectangle this one's going to be white so we will add this to it into here we will change the y offset and the x offset in a minute but we need to change the width down to being a bit thinner something like that and the height as well and we'll change this to be 45 degrees and we'll move the x offset along and this will get us a bit better scaling so i think 0.4 might be okay yeah 0.4 by 0.13 so the next thing i'm going to do is get the s duplicate and add this into our timeline we're going to add one copy and one copy only and this time i'm going to set this to being 180 degrees or is it 90 yeah 90 degrees there we go and then the x offset over i'm just going to make us a little arrow which is facing up and this goes in with the same sort of styling as the 100 graphics when you look at the branding that the 100 views you know lots of arrows and things like that that they have going up up and down the sides so i will then move this up again and we'll add another duplicate 
and this time we're going to do a lot of copies in fact we're going to go for 30 copies and then increase the y offset by a lot so something like that 1.5 yeah i think that'll do so let's go back to our frame of the wicket in there because we don't want it to be intruding on the side of it so we can then add our we can move our arrows over even more just so they're out of the way and then drag the y offset all the way down to the point there you can see all the arrows on the screen I'm just going to increase the offsets in between the Y something like that so that we've got a continuous point to work from so we'll keyframe this here and then we'll keyframe all the way back to I think maybe 2 somewhere like that 2.25 at the very end so that when we're playing through it's just a slow moving arrow setting up and I think that will add some texture to or some sort of key interest to the display so the next thing I'm going to do is add another I think we'll add another one into the corner so we'll do the same sort of thing we'll add another rectangle I'm not going to do an arrow this time this time I'm going to do across similar to how I've worked it before so we will do our keep that the same we will change the width down to something quite small something like 0 0.5 0 0.05 and again we'll make this height a little bit smaller something like that maybe something a bit smaller in the width again and I think we'll set this angle in fact we'll keep the angle the same this time we'll make this angle again 90 degrees and we'll make one copy and then we can add a we'll move this to the bottom corner so we'll go x offset over somewhere like here and move the y offset down as well i think it's a little bit too large really so we'll just bring down the width and the height make it quite small what I'm going to do instead is this time add a S grid modifier so we'll make these 0.05 and again we'll make these 0.05 so they're square and we can just make it a little bit larger 0.06 yeah that gives them a bit of space and we'll move our X width over our uh, while set down as well so these ones I want to make have a sort of fluid sort of rotation so that the crosses are moving so what we'll do is I'm gonna make this a uh, where's our grid I want to make our grid 4x4 four four, maybe 3x3 three three. yeah that looks good and then we can go to our rectangle here's our angle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make 10 frames and it's going to rotate 90 degrees and then 180 and then 270 
There we go. So now let's go control A, S, and then I'll go through all the midpoints like that and just hit flatten. And I'm just going to add the influence to each of these so that they can have our curve the whole way through. Okay, so that's the last one done. So now when you watch it through, it will cont continuously rotate 90 degrees the whole way through and be quite smooth and just be there for a bit more um, texture. So what I'm gonna do now is animate our London Spirit logo again so that it comes back to being dark blue again. So we need to go back into our group and then start changing the colors in the video. So this time I'm gonna do the opposite of what we did before. So I'll start off on white, go one, two, three, and go to light blue, one, two, three, and back to the dark blue. And we'll continue to do this for the rest of them. So So there we have it. So it should now loop in our text. That's it. So it will now loop at the top here. It should loop at the side as well. So we just watch for that now. It doesn't quite loop, so it's try and adjust this slightly so that when this comes in, it matches the back end of the animation. So we just want to tweak that bit. So we just move this up slightly. Maybe to there. Let's have a look. No. So it jumps back, so we want to go back a bit. No, it's not quite again, but we just need to move it back a little bit. There we go. So that will loop in that continuous motion. I think it is done, apart from just adding some motion blur, which I can just add. It's quite simple because it's only realistically you know, a few moving parts, we can just add it onto the um, S render and onto text number two, which is here. That's all we need. So I'll play the final animation again for you. Thank you very much for watching.